Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, beloveds. Welcome, welcome. Welcoming you. Welcome to this really special Eclipse Day live stream with us. Mm. It's really lovely to be back on these platforms with you all, sharing together as a team. Mm. Yeah, so welcome, welcome as you pop on, whether you're watching live or in the replay inviting you to share in the comments where you are plugging in from around the world today inviting you to share with us how this eclipse portal has been for you so far mm. we had the eclipse exact six hours ago almost to the minute it was at 11 a.m UK time. Yeah, and it was a really powerful moment. Hi, welcome. Welcome, Andrea. Welcome, Lynn. Hi, beautiful ones. So with this platform that we're using, StreamYard, if you want us to be able to see your name, you have to click the little instructions in the top. Um, just so StreamYard can show us your name and then we'll know who's commenting but welcoming you from Austin, Texas, from Madrid. Welcome, welcome. Ah, so my name is Elsa Fields, those who don't know me already. And this is Jerome. I'm Jerome Zaran. Welcome. So we've got 21 of you live with us, which is really beautiful. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Julia from Switzerland, Michigan. Beautiful. Toronto, Lauren Rose in France. Amazing. So this live stream, the inspiration for this Sacred Sound Live today really came because we just returned from a very powerful, intense <laughs> pilgrimage to Egypt. Mm. It was our second journey to Egypt in this lifetime. And the first trip we went on was in February 2022 at the opposite end of this eclipse cycle that we're in. and. I believe, I could be remembering this slightly wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it was actually just after we entered into this phase with the lunar nodes, with the north node in Taurus and the south node in Scorpio. And so we're now in this, this intense portal until July, 2023. And so this is 18 months where as a collective, we're all journeying with this same karmic energy and any beings that are incarnating over this period will all have this karmic signature in their birth chart as a, as a real signature of what energy they're bringing from previous incarnations and how they're evolving in this life. This is the significance of the South and the North Node. And actually this has um, personal significance for both of us because we are both, we were both born when the lunar nodes were also in these signs. For me, it's the opposite, opposite way around. I have a Scorpio North node, Taurus South node, and Jerome is the opposite. He's the same. This is actually your nodal return, I believe. Now you have a North node in Taurus as well. So this astrology is deeply connected I feel and many feel with the mysteries of ancient Egypt and with the age of Taurus, which was probably one of the last flowerings of ancient goddess culture that existed before we moved through the tumultuous age of, of Pisces and really like the dawn of patriarchal religion 
on the planet. And so for me, this time, this eclipse portal and these 18 months are a real opportunity for us to collectively remember some of these ancient mysteries. We're literally waking up those timelines in our own soul blueprint, in our own soul remembrance. And we get to decide which karmic ties we're ready to let go of and which ones we're inviting in the beauty, the knowledge, the mystery from those timelines and carrying them forward. And if any of you have been feeling as well really intense energy over the last few days, this is also attributable to um, this really tight conjunction we have um, with this full moon. Venus and Mercury are both in the sign of Scorpio and Uranus is conjunct um, the, the North Node in Taurus. And Uranus is all about big changes for the collective, revolution, right? Uh, real, um, real tumultuous events. And so this axis of the, the Taurus-Scorpio axis is really connected to death and rebirth, to the crumbling of old structures and systems that don't serve, and the reawakening and the remembering of all that's really going to help us to create those resilient communities of the future, those resilient spiritual communities. And so that's my little astrological download and what I've been feeling into. Let us know in the chat if that resonates with you. And I'm just going to open up to Jerome and, and see what he wants to share around, yeah, bringing you in on our recent pilgrimage and what that was like for you. Yeah, well, it was the second footstep journey for us. So traveling back to Egypt and expanding on what we had previously done. So on the first journey I had set out, uh, which is my personal journey, which we do together as well, but Shungite grid work. So using Shungite, elite Shungite, to cleanse and rebuild Earth's grids and the, the ley lines, the dragon lines, and how that corresponds to the energy lines of our bodies, our chakras and the way that they align and the, the way that our meridians and all of those lines link up. And so it's not really what you might think it is when you go to Egypt. It's very deep, very powerful. If you say yes to going to Egypt and you are a light worker, and you work with sound, it means you're signing up to do a deep work, a powerful work. So, as I say, it's not all pink roses and candy. It's tough. And so what we're bringing you is really um, an assimilation of a deep journey that wasn't easy, that we had to really push through to reach its zenith, to reach the pinnacle. And for me, the pinnacle was going all the way through these ancient temples and we went through many and into many and journeyed in lots of them on the physical and within the astral as well in that sense. And so the pinnacle was finally getting to the Great Pyramid and going in there with a group of 28 people for two whole hours, private access, and it was very powerful, very difficult as well, because what I always teach my clients, well, not teach, because I more prefer to say a loving brother who facilitates an empowerment, a process. But when you get 28 people together and everybody's trying to sound and sing to a tune and the King's Chamber is an exact waveform of a low bass tone, that when you sing, it has precise mathematical proportions and the way that it activates the body. And so basically, it was tough because some people had the ability to stay in tune and many were going in and out of the tune, which creates dissonance. It creates disharmony and it creates these 
strange overtones and strange sounds. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that that's bad because quite often what I sort of express through my journey of what you might call the ancient sonic alchemy of Egypt is that when you make pure sound in these powerful temples, it brings out the dissonance. It brings out the what I call the lead, the heaviness. And this is a really important key factor when you are working with pure tones, sacred sound, healing music, is that we must assume that when we make pure sounds, they oscillate inside, they vibrate through us, and they erupt everything that is basically not us anymore. They've become something that's mm, distasteful. We don't like it, and we know it's there, and we're thinking and feeling and journeying, well, how do I become the alchemist? How do I turn that lead into gold? Mm. How do I allow... Well, let's get straight to it. I call it the sound of the darkness. The sound of the pain. So the sound body that leads to the pain body. And how do you use one's intention and become the alchemist to transform the pain and the poison and the detri all of the, the dross and the, the darkness and the pain mm -hmm. to get to the beautiful, what you might call abyss or womb state of the darkness. So darkness is not all bad. You know, we need the darkness. If it's very, very bright sun, you're like, oh, I just need to sleep now, you know? Mm -hmm. Too much light. So that's been the journey, is moving very quickly through the Nile. And it was really tough being in a group of 28 people, and I, for one, one of four men. So there were four men in a strong group of lots of powerful goddess women. And it wasn't easy. And so it's really important to know who you're following. And with no disrespect to anybody, Sometimes you really do need to know who you're following and why. Mm. These are really, really important questions to ask and to do your research and do some back checks on people before you go and decide you're going to follow them. So it was tough, but hey, it ultimately was chosen by our higher selves and our soul. And yeah. we went there. So my personal journey, I went there for very specific reasons. So I, I've planted eight Shungite Amazing. crystal grids with eight chunks of gem grade rose in the center. He was on a mission. Um, yeah, I was on a mission. And then after the two hours private access in the King's Chamber with the group of 28, we all went out and we waited on the outside of the pyramid. It's night, you look up, the stars are there mm. and you're like, wow. Yeah. And then a group of nine of us went back in and that's when it went up a notch so you spent so, four out he spent four hours yeah approximately in the, in the pyramid. four and a half hours yeah, it was incredible very high level activation so you know you might read an email from us and you might think you know what are they talking about egyptian sonic alchemy i mean come on you know and sometimes you do laugh but to be quite honest with you we have come back, and you would too, we have come back with a very strong energy in the body. And the thing about power and energy and love is when it builds up, it's got to go somewhere. Mm. So that's why we wanted to do this. It's very important to us that we do these things and that we bring to you our love and our energy. Um, but yeah. It, it was wasn't, intense. It was intense. It was intense. And know? I can see someone else commenting, it's an intense place. And I think what was so fascinating was that Travis. the first time that we went to Egypt was this total polar opposite experience, right? I'm remembering mm. this correctly. We had this such a blissful heart opening experience. And mm. it was just Jerome and I with a tour guide the whole time. Um, and really, 
the added layer of the group dynamic was so fascinating and kudos to our group leader Sarah Jane for really bringing us all together and really holding that group because as Jerome said there were many powerful beings and what was so fascinating was that each one had their own intentions and that's what Egypt does for us it brings out our individual karmic divine mission, divine purpose. And then um, this, this interplay of that with power, which is so linked to the Scorpio Taurus axis again, is this real sense of, of how, you, um, how you interface with the group, but also ensure that your needs are met on the journey, right? And yeah, exactly. When power builds, it needs to go somewhere. And so... This is part of, of why we love to work with sacred sound because it, it really connects us with our innate ability to move energy that we all have. And this is something that the ancient Egyptians were absolute masters of. I mean, they had technology that we have no idea about and that m completely stumps geologists, archeologists, all of these scientists, right, can't figure it out to this day. Not only just how they built these incredible structures, which is likely because of um, sound, it was done with sound, but also how they constructed these chambers for sound, yeah. for, specifically for the creation of sound. And frequency and, matching, basically. Yeah. So if someone was ill, they would find a way to beam a sound into the body that matched the ailment. So this is a very powerful way to bring alchemy in. Mm. So this is what I've discovered is when you feel something in one of your organs, it could be a liver, a stomach or spleen or your womb or any part of your organs, and you can hear that something is off. You just know it. You don't quite know what to do and you don't know how to do it but it, we call it frequency matching. That's what I have discovered from my own excavations and journeying. Um, many of you might know, I have a powerful teacher, Chong Fu, Ascended Master Chong Fu, who speaks through my mum, Sally. I've had many, many sessions, and this is a type of thing that I've been developing. I call it frequency matching, and that's my type of alchemy that I bring in, which is when you can hear that something is off, how do you align it, bring it back mm. into alignment with the sound of your higher self and the sound of the cosmos and bring it, bring your body and your organs and your spirit and your soul and your higher self and your soul purpose back on track. We frequency match. So we hear the sound that is off and we, we make that exact sound. That, so that does require developing your spiritual ear. Yeah. Does require it's building art. your clear audience sonic psychic gift ability so if you go and then try and open those faculties up in Egypt you have to be very aware of what you're doing because sound is powerful mm. when you break the sonic boundaries you attract all sorts in mm. and that's where you have to be very bolstered and very strong and make sure that you are I mean, you could be doing sound anywhere in the world. So that's why it's really important to build the container correctly and hold the boundaries correctly. That means calling in powerful presences correctly and setting up your sacred temple correctly. But yeah, frequency matching. And so you make the sound of what you know you aren't enjoying. And that takes courage. So toning from the place of pain and you'll see eventually that sound shifts. Yeah. So my type of alchemy is something I call Shungite Sacred Sound Alchemy. That's where you use crystals and Shungite as a body, as a container to shift the lead or the pain or the matter. I would call it the dark matter that's within. You know, let's be honest, we're in a time where we have an opportunity to shift some deep karmic stuff from our ancestry lines, from deep within, pain from the inner child. And we're like, I really want to get my higher self coming in, but there just seems to be a lot going on here. My, 
my chakras seem to be a little bit clogged. And so that's what I mean. And Elsa has her journey around the alchemic process as well of, of ancient Egypt. And we have an exciting time to in a safe manner. And that's why I really want to iterate that is because it's it is about doing it safely. Yeah. Because it was we went through some experiences which we'll leave it there, but it wasn't nice. And we had to really be like, okay, so now we're going to do it like this. It now. was a deep clearing. Yeah. And if I can just share what my experience was, was that there was a moment where unconsciously my soul obviously had contracted to be in this group. And, and yet what was happening for me was that I was undergoing this huge individual clearing and purging, which was actually the reason why why I returned to Egypt. And um, it wasn't our intention to return so soon, but now with the eclipses closing, you know, I can see how it was perfect timing, in fact, because what I was doing was clearing a particular timeline that I had become aware of, which was deeply connected with power. And this is this is often what happens when we travel to these sacred sites, right? Is the first time we go there, we get really opened up and activated. And then we have to integrate when we return back to our place of safety, to our nest. And then it was like the next level of healing was coming up. And literally to the day when I returned to the place where this, lifetime had played out which without going into too much detail was a big power play power over lifetime in one of the temples and when when we got back to the boat the purging began straight away <laughs> it was so intense the somatic experience that i had and in the end um we actually made the decision to come home early we actually had to cut the trip short by about five days and we didn't make it to Mount Sinai where the rest of the group went. Not this time. Because we were we were both, I think because we do this particular kind of work as well, um, we are very sensitive in a certain way. And it was like our bodies had just been completely saturated. We were like, that's enough. This is all we can take. We can't take any more. Yeah, Karnak, and, Karnak Temple was powerful. Yeah, exactly. It was really beautiful. Yeah, why don't you, some of you express to us how you fi found your journeys? In Egypt. Mm. Yeah, I know a few of you watching have been there. Um, and so this is, as Jerome says, is, is how we use this sonic technology is so important. The intention that we're bringing. And from tapping into those temples, you know, each one of the temples was used for sacred sound. Each one of the, they were all sound temples. They all used this sound technology and they used it in, um, for, you know, as Jerome said, for the healing of individuals, like the sarcophagus chambers that they had in many of the pyramids that were not tombs. They didn't find mummies in any of the Giza pyramids, by and the way. And as many have said, they're not really sarcophaguses. So sarcophagus is not really a good term. It's more like a sound, what was the word that we came up An with? An amplification group? rose granite box, basically. Yeah, a chamber of amplification. An amplifier. Yeah. And mm. so it's the amplification and um, as Jerome said, the frequency matching, that individual sound healing, but also, boosting the light body for um, probably the priestesses, the priests, the pharaohs, the people in positions of power in society. And Egypt is another story where that became increasingly patriarchal over time. Mm. But there were, I, I really feel, there were hugely um, divine feminine focused communities in Egypt, um, really connected to that Hathor frequency of love. And so many of these rituals were were very much connected to that um, to that collective activation, sonic activation. And if any of you have visited Saqqara, that was actually the first place we visited in February. And they there you can actually see they actually have ancient, basically like ancient massage tables. <laughs> They're ancient tables where people would lie and receive the sonic resonance. Yeah. And very much also connected with the crystalline realms as well. 
we we um acquired a couple of these incredible yeah. andara raw andara crystals um while we were there and this kind of andara is only found in the region where the Philae Temple of Isis is. They're really specific to that region. Andaras are found in different places around the world, but these ones come from that particular part of the Nile. And so for sure, a lot of this sonic technology was crystalline, which is partly I'm sure why Jerome is so obsessed with crystals yeah. as well. And Well, they found that rock, didn't they, where yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the guide was telling us how, like famined earth, it's all cracked and, you know, scarred. There was a top layer on this rock, a massive rock off the floor like this. It's huge. And this is like black granite. So we're talking about a stone that is very hard. It's very, very strong. And he said they must have had a technology mm. that could beam a sound into a substance from within and make it break from inside out. So, yeah, like it was literally crumbling in our hands. You can't Gra explain granite, it. which is a super hard rock, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah, these crystals are amazing. I actually mm. don't know very much about Andaras. These are the first. Andaras that we've acquired. Um, it but feels yeah, like they've come from another world. Very cosmic. You know. It feels very Syrian, actually. Mm. This blue energy, um, as some of you are saying. Yeah, it's blue for the throat chakra, obviously mm. Isis as well. So it's incredible that they're found mm. right where her temple is. Yeah. Yeah, love that, Jenna. Atlantean timelines mm. as well. I mean, Egypt is a portal to so many realms. And the more we we journey with Egypt, the more I realize how much of the work that I'm bringing through in this lifetime is so deeply connected to those Egyptian timelines, mm. but not in a sense of, um, of A, assuming that I know everything, of course, because this is not about ego, right? There are so many of us that are collectively remembering this, mm. but, but this is part of what we've actually come here to do is to also be that be that guide for others to remember who you truly are in and connection with egypt or that, other realms yeah and in that way of, of being a pure conduit just a, a vessel just a pure a pure vessel without the left brain sometimes without lots of yeah. mental stuff going on and how to allow your mind to step out of the way yeah. so that you can be in a sense, not in your ego self. I mean, we're all on that journey. We're all trying to dissolve, you could say, the lower astral of the ego self. Because not all the ego is bad. Some of the ego is very important. You know, it's like, oh, hang on a minute. We need to get ourselves out of here. And it, some of the ego slots in and we need it. But it's about being able to be that clear vessel, that clear channel, that clear instrument and as Elsa has said many of us here we that's what we've come and chosen to do and that's why we have a strong calling to bring people together bring you mm. 34 four of you beautiful people together to feel and grow something right now in this moment in this present now moment and as many of you know maybe you don't but when a group gets together an oversoul is formed for a small amount of time and then that group might get together again. Yeah. And that oversoul grows over time. And then suddenly we feel, hang on a minute, we're all creating something here together. And it that clear instrument, that clear vessel starts to become stronger. And that is what we have found by committing to a journey you are saying yes to meeting some sticky places, some challenged yeah. places that are like, don't want to change, places that don't want to move. An inner child or a little brother part of you or a little sister part of you that's like, hell no, I'm not changing. I'm just fine how I am, thank you. And then Egypt goes, oh yeah, <laughs> we'll see about that. How about some of this? 
and how about some of that? And before you know it, you're having your ass handed to you, you know, and your mouth. I love, the, I love you know? it. I love the way but, you express things. You know, and then you get to go into the king's chamber. Um, Elsa had a very different experience, which she'll <laughs> oh share with gosh. us. But I got to lie in the, I'm going to call it the rose granite mm. amplification box inside the chamber. I got to lie in there for 10 whole minutes. And this was right at the end of a four plus hour serious activation where we were calling in many, many names. And that's kind of my thing that I've been developing 20 years now is the art of conjuring, the, the art of calling in and the Chong Fu principle, the art of commanding and commanding two words, come and come and be with me it's very strong and this is one of you know, the uses of sacred sound as yeah. well that you're really bringing forward is really empowering people to find that voice that is that commanding voice that come and voice calling in the beings to work with you yeah. on your specific path of yeah. growth of building whatever it is that you're building mm. in the beauty way mm. and this is a really key principle around the, the sacred sound and these amplification chambers are very powerful places to do this work in as well mm. and welcome caroline she's talking <laughs> about this stone i think she's yeah. talking, about the, talking about the andara yeah mm. yeah and so in the king's chamber my experience was the total opposite. I literally <laughs> didn't last 10 minutes in there, which was the same as last time, actually. Mm. Um, but it was really it, the amplification of everybody, of 30 people, nearly 30 people sounding together, just totally activated mm. all my cells to the next level of that purging that was happening for me. Mm. And sped clearing, it up, clearing it? that timeline. Mm. And um, it, was, it was actually quite comical because I was stuck in a pyramid, which mm. is what maybe like four story building high is where the king's chamber is. You have to climb through mm. a 45 degree angle tunnel to get there. I know some of you have been in there. Um, and so I was like trapped in this pyramid and all I could focus on was not throwing up before I got out of the pyramid. <laughs> It was really intense, but I'm really glad that you had a blissful, amazing it kind experience. Of, it, and that's what we're talking about is sometimes you've just got to say yes to yeah. the great purge. Yeah. And, and what, what, the, what the chamber did for Elsa is it resonated everything and made everything oscillate. The sound was moving through and because Elsa is a clairaudient as well. She has very trained ear spiritually sonically so the sound was just washing through and all the sound so nice angelic sound but also when mm. when frequencies clash you get this very odd dissonance this very strange sound and you're like oh that's just oh i can't hear that anymore i'm gonna have to this is making me leave basically and <laughs> you experienced that last time as well but what had happened is the the clearing work Elsa had did, done before, it had suddenly reached a head, and luckily a sister was like, I want to go out as well. Yeah, luckily I wasn't <laughs> alone making my way back to the hotel. And then we had an interesting <laughs> altercation with the Egyptian police that I won't go into, but it was definitely an initiation. Mm. Yeah, love how you're all loving the Andaras. Loving the Andaras. And if I can just say as well, before we go into our sacred sound journey, you know, creating these powerful groups for transformation is something that we, we are really discovering we love to do together in Divine Union. And we have our upcoming Sonic Mastery journey, which is beginning next week. We're calling in four more beautiful souls to join us for three months of yeah. incredible journeying with audio production, sacred sound creation online. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. But also, yeah. I think we both got the sense, and I, I think I hope it's okay to share this on this live, that the next time we return to Egypt will be a group that we're holding together. Yeah. And actually a, a group of specific souls that have been called to do this sonic work. And have mastered, you know, very specific things which you will need to definitely 
really feel into and tick off it will be by application form only yeah um, no, i'm sensing know. that many many of you watching you know have have journeyed deep with sound and that's that's what we mean by mastery it's like mastery in your own way of um because there are these levels in terms of how um how you really understand the sound moving through you as jerome said there's the layers of dissonance there's the layers of emotional release there's the layers of of the pain body that need to be expressed before you can claim to access the higher self, the voice of the soul, you know, I mean, it's not always the case, but oftentimes, and this is, you know, part of the journeys that I teach as well is like this process of listening to the voice of the inner child, listening to the voice that's been repressed for so long, giving her or him space to be heard is an important prerequisite before before the um, those aspects of you will allow you to bring in the healing sound, the pure sound. Um, and I'm curious, those of you that are watching, if you resonate with that as well, because it's, it's a model that we both teach in our work. And this is a part of this journey that I'm sure will manifest at some point is is beyond anything that the ego mind or any other layers really need to be satisfied with the sound so that you can just drop into the group frequency field. Because what we experience, which is really natural, is that there's a real desire for the voice to be heard. Because especially, I'm going to say, especially for women, often there have been many, many layers of silencing and repression of the voice that have occurred not only in this lifetime, but in many lifetimes, potentially. And so when you enter into a sonic temple and there are a group of souls who all have this silencing sense, they're like, we're ready to rock. We're ready to just let rip. Mm. And it's if you're audio sensitive, sensitive or if you work with healing sound, it's really full on. Mm. And that was part of what, what we both experienced. Yeah, lots, lots was uncovered. And that's the incredible thing about being in any group in whichever way that it is, you start to discover many things and, and ways that you can adapt and shape it. And many of my journeys in groups, so I have done a five year development group with Ascended Master Chung Fu, and I did then, I followed that with a seven year trance mediumship development group. So 12 years of groups, and I've done other groups as well. I've done a Chung Fu men's group that I was a part of. And what you discover is just how important equality is. Yeah. And that meaning of equality, that when you sit in a group, you know everybody else in that group is owning fully, 100%, everything that is coming up for them. And they realize then that everybody else is holding just in equal proportion everything that they are. There's no gaps in the group, in other words. There's mm. no weak links in the chain. There's no way for any external forces. I won't say anything more than that, but forces that just basically cannot get in. It's impossible. So when you're moving through very quickly, say across the Nile, and you are rapidly moving through very powerful places. Choppy waters. <laughs> and for thousands of years, a lot of these places were not used for good things. They were misused. And they're still not. I mean, for, we don't know what deeds. goes on in a lot of the temples, even and, to this day. Yeah. So for me, that's a lot of the discovery that has kind of flowed to us is equality in the ownership of everything of the heaviness that arises and realizing that you can work in ways that very quickly harmonize and bring mm. that lightness in. But there has to be tools and practices and ways to quickly dissolve and alchemize. Um, and that's why quite often I do default to having that toolkit of elite Shungite. Yeah. You know, if I'd have had my way, Everybody, anytime anything came up, the Shungite University on would, tour would have been covered in 
elite shungite head well, to toe. Well, you did. You gave some powerful shungite sessions to to the men in the group. You were really anchoring and grounding the energy. It was really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Not mentioning not mentioning any names. Um, there were some moments when we were able to fall back on the shungite, and it yeah. was very strong. It's a it, it's beautiful, and it's when you have things that you can fall back on, and you know that they're there. It does bring a kind of stability, a kind of mm. rockness, a kind of groundedness. Especially for us, moving along the boat, it was like, oh my God. Constant like, movement. Ooh. And we're very earthy, you know. I'm Capricorn, he's Virgo, um, yeah. your Taurus moon. Um, yeah, we're just very earthy people. I feel like water signs were having a great time on the, <laughs> on yeah. the boat. But what I also want to add mm. is that it really feels like the the grid and the work that so many light workers have been doing in Egypt, mm. activating these temples, remembering, calling in the light, really working in a beautiful way. Mm. It's all we're all preparing the way for each other. Mm. And it really feels to me like it's it's ready. The time is now. Yeah. For these temples to be used again and used on the etheric realm as well, not just in the physical, because of course many of them are in ruins, but with with the group that we would intend to bring whenever that manifests, it would really be with that intention of journeying with the sacred sound, mm -hmm. of activating the sonic temple within and without, of really using Using this the connection yeah. to really bolster your own spiritual leadership on the path that you're on and the way that you serve your communities, you know, yeah. because sound is such a powerful tool. Mm. So, yeah, I just wanted to finish up what we were sharing there with mm. that real positive note of like all of this clearing work, all of it is is part of the process. We can't ignore the negative emotions, right? And as Andrea has said, absolutely, the Shungai for repairing portals that have been taken Beautiful. by the ones we won't name, but we are mm -hmm. we are very much reclaiming these power places. Yeah. And as my teacher has taught me, this is not a one-time thing. We might go and repair and reclaim a place like the Stonehenge and Avebury, right, in England, but we're gonna have to go back and do it again because this is, it is kind of like a Jedi thing. <laughs> It gets used for bad. Sacred and then sound you're like, Jedi. Get out of here. Off with you, you rapscallions. <laughs> and then you go back and you reclaim and you embed some more shungite and some more power crystals. Mm. And, you know, and this is what I feel needs to be done. And it's, this is why know, it's a group work as well, because yeah. it's not about one individual deciding on what's needed. Yeah. And that's what I think it's fair mm. to say we felt was lacking in our group was a shared intention that yeah. would have been an added layer of power in terms of what we could have achieved. Yeah. But it's it's very difficult when you arrive in a group and you haven't got to know each other before, right? And you just spend you just spend a lot of time arriving in the group. So that's also something to navigate, you know, with, with well, the journeys. You're kind of like, am I going to a temple? Or am I sitting in a group trying to, which is beautiful, by the way. Group not development it, work but you is could a have, huge We thing. could have spent a month just getting yeah. to know everyone in the group first. And then you go on this mammoth journey. And then you're like, oh, I, I know Sharon. And I know Bobby. And I know Jerry. And I know Karen. And you're like, everything's good mm. here. And you can, you don't have to be on hyper alert thinking, hmm, have they got their thing down? Can I trust them? I think it was you a know. lot about trust, wasn't it? Yeah. It was it... real. And part of that is is about the collective as well. You mm. know, the collective energies that we're moving through around power structures, around hierarchies or perceived hierarchies. Mm. Um, and Egypt exacerbates so much of this. So, of course, the first time we went with just me and you just mm. traveling along together, it was like easy. With Pink Lotus Tours. Yeah, big up Pink Lotus Tours. They're really beautiful. They did a great job. Amazing you know. company. Mm. And I think what's beautiful now is that we're really gaining the confidence and the and the the confidence and sense of like understanding Egypt because I what I would never want to do is lead a tour and not really feel plugged into the land there. And I think we're really 
over the coming months, we're really growing those connections that we've made and yeah, really, really formulating this, this sacred space for that group to manifest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. well, it's lovely yeah. to talk about it all. And it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Air one's chest a little bit. Yeah. And... Beautiful. It was, a, it was a beautiful experience, even through the intense initiations. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it makes you tune in because many of you, of you are into sacred sound. It really does make you tune in to the voice activation work, you know. Um, yeah. Amazing little oh, yeah. share there. Yeah. Blue so ocean sapphire. Really yeah. opening and activating the command center, the throat chakra, and that you can really angle that and empower and open that to create your own offerings in the world. So right now we've got two very, very nice microphones, really high end and an incredible sound card. And this is what we're about. We want to help you get that incredible sound where you're like linked even more in to loving yourself, not in an egoic way, but just like you can hear how clear your voice is and you're like, you're I, a clear I love that. Yeah. And then you bring a song through with your spirit drum or your crystal bowl and your instrument, maybe your sistrum, and you're like, wow, it sounds so clear when I rattle that thing or play that drum. And that's why we're so passionate. And yeah, we wanted to A, share with you what we have and invite you to journey with us more. We have to, we, we, we must. So we are inviting you to come and journey with us more in lots of ways, but most importantly, in just how many days? In seven days. Seven days. Yeah, we begin our sonic mastery journey. Yeah. You can find out more info. I think it will be in the link that I put in this video. It's also on my website, elsafield.co.uk, mm. under courses, sonic mastery. Mm. This is a really unique journey that we're co-leading for the first time. We're leading a course together, which is incredible. <laughs> We've worked together in so many ways and mm. we're ready to, to step forward as co-teachers of this, Definitely. which is really beautiful. Um, and, you know, the, the journey, the way we've built it out is this, this real opportunity for you to go at your own pace with learning about the technology, about the modern day sacred sound technology. Yeah. Because we know that this takes time to learn. And so the way we've structured it is that it's actually a three month journey. And you, and you have one incredible epic masterclass each month with us. So it's like you get this intense input and time and learning, mm. and then you get the space to put it into practice. And we'll be sharing in-depth knowledge of how we build our soundscapes, our sacred sound magic online, um, teaching you the audio editing, audio recording skills for you to get started with this. And, you know, this is probably something that we get the most questions about, mm. but because it's not like a ceremonial journey, we were reluctant to create courses about it, weren't we? Because mm. we were like, but we're, we're into ceremony and ritual and, you know, <laughs> but we're also super nerdy. That's mm. the other side of it, right? Left brain, right brain. But if you hear right now, there's a beautiful sacred soundtrack behind what we're doing now. And so we were kind of like, hang on a minute. We need to show people how they can do this so that, because it's quite nice having something behind and you can then open up and feel held in the way that you express and you bring forward mm. what's coming through from spirit and you open up your faculties and, and talk openly and in a fluid way because you have this fluid, whew, beautiful soundtrack going on. And so in that sense, we're bringing the ceremony inside the ceremony in that way. So showing you and I've spent yeah. 20 plus years developing, um, very fortunate to have been the sacred ceremony composer, producer for Kathy Jones's Goddess Conferences for over 10 years running. 
And she really, in that sense, drew that out of me, saw that I created music. She's good music. at doing that. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of her skills. And so I committed to it. So I started developing the art of creating incredible soundtracks that you can do anything you like over. You might be a YouTuber, podcast host, speaker, interviewer, you know, meditations. You make your own sacred sound singles and albums. And so we're very passionate, mm. yet even uh, storytelling uh, yeah, on perfect. stage, all of that, you know. So, yeah. So this journey is really, um, I would say, it's, you know, I know there are people in the group, we have a beautiful group, who have different levels of experience with this. So if you're a total beginner, you're welcome because we're showing you from the ground up how we build in our unique way, this ceremonial space for us to record ourselves. So this is why it's different from other audio production or you know, just you watching YouTube videos about this, you're getting the sacred sound aspect of it. And, um, you know, at a very minimum, we would love for everyone to come away feeling that they can confidently record themselves, their voice, any instruments that you have available to you or you want to bring in and, and actually produce yourself, produce guided meditations, podcasts, online courses. Um, and we'll be using Logic Pro, which is the program that we use in inside of um, Apple. Um, but if you're on a PC, you know, you can absolutely apply the kind of practices and tools we'll use, just the operating system will be different. Mm. So anyway, you can mm. find out more on the website. I'd like um, to read this person's thing. Yeah. This is really Do you want beautiful. to put it up on the screen? You go for it. Okay. You go for it. <laughs> yeah, I love so, this. I can't see who it is. It just says Better Facebook I user. found an electronic description. <laughs> Uh, I paste it here. Uh, blue ocean sapphire and dara. Blue, mm. blue emanates from the core of the universe. Its vibration is the holographic stream of the now. Blue activates oh, your, <laughs> your destiny blueprint and your internal connection to your Akashic wow. records. Connects you to the archangelic realm and to the goddess Isis. That is epic. Mm, I love that. Thank you. So, shall we do some sacred sound now? <laughs> that would be stunning, wouldn't it? How could I say no <laughs> to such a goddess? <laughs> yes. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. So, we're going to just invite you to open up with us to journey with some sacred sound. And so, in your own way, mm. dropping into your body dropping into your physical body temple, taking some deep breaths. And on the exhale, just letting go of anything that you've been holding on to from your day. Letting go and being held in this container that we're creating. Goddess Hathor. Goddess Hathor. Goddess Isis. Calling in and commanding forth Hathor and Isis. <sighs> Inviting them into our circle. <sighs> this radiant blue light that surrounds us. 
that purifies, a radiant blue light that connects with your heart chakra. A thousand petaled rose unfurling at the heart chakra. And as we play and intone and invoke, inviting you to also bring in your voice to open up the portal of your throat, the portal of your sacral chakra, connecting these two centers in the way that you naturally are, that you naturally can. This divine sonic technology that you have in your body. As we invoke the sacred geometry of the pyramid, around you, visualizing that blue light, diamond pyramidal, spinning, blue essence of Hathor and Isis. As we connect with her temple at Dendera, the center, the center of Hathor worship in ancient times throughout the age of Hathor. in the essence of the frequency of Hathor, the frequency of love, divine union, of Venus mm. into the Hathor temples, the frequency of love. So it is. And as you journey in this inner temple space, inviting you to breathe in and retrieve whatever it is that she's showing you that your soul is ready to retrieve from the depths of this Scorpio eclipse portal. <sighs>
people. Ooh. I think uh, we're back. We're back. We, we <laughs> lost half of you, but hey. Um, Are we back? Let us know in the comments if we're back. That would be really handy. Basically, um, <laughs> our Logitech camera. No. Well, uh, well basically. I think it was a mix of things, wasn't it? I think we just, like, basically blew the system with yeah. whatever we were bringing through. <laughs> well, there are there are silicon crystals in the computer, so, you know, anyway, yeah. that's a big oh, that's true. That's really... I think we just you know, blasted it. I have had a lot of technical issues recently, and it seems to be related to several things, but it could be this blue chalice as well, because mm. it's when I started using the Andara chalice. Anyway, we're back. <laughs> Oh gosh, you know, apologies. These, these things happen. happen but, um, echoes. Are you getting an echo, are you? Oh, hang on. Hmm, shouldn't uh, be echoing. Maybe check um, the RME. Let's turn off loop back. We don't need it anymore. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> no echo. Okay. Beloved, apologies. <laughs> I love apologies. Andrea. <laughs> Put shungit. <laughs> Put shungite in it. As the Russians call it, shungit. Let's take a moment yeah. and just, yeah, apologies for that abrupt mm. interruption to the deep journey we were in. Mm. Just taking a moment to breathe, recenter, mm. mm. reconnecting with this harmonious realm that we were journeying in before we got cut out and I'm not gonna play my chalice anymore because it clearly blew the system do you want to play your gold one sure let's try that let's just bring us back from the temple mm. giving great thanks giving great thanks to this energy that we have retrieved received this deep well this deep well of remembrance from the age of Hathor, the age of the Hathor temples. May this continue to bless you for the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of your life. And as you breathe in, bringing your whole self back from this journey, bringing your whole self back into your being, retrieving, receiving, with a big sound. you to place a layer of gold around your energy field, around the blue, a layer of gold, the Hathor ray, the body of Hathor, this golden energy that's uplifting your soul's light, your ability to see clearly your ability to move through life energized, connected with the solar ray, with Ra, with all of the sun beings. <sighs> Bringing yourself back home into the center of your heart space. Blessed be. Blessed be. Mm. <laughs> mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a powerful portal that we entered. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so we are excited to be inviting you to come and be with us. Absolutely. Mm. 
Sonic Mastery begins mm. next Wednesday. So we have a week more space, um, time open for you to hop in. If you have any questions, feel free to message either of us. Yeah, and if you want to know more about the Shungite side of things, you can follow me at Shungite Sacred Sound. I know lots of you already are. Yeah. And yeah, how I merge the realms of Shungite crystal healing and sacred sound activation work. Mm. Yeah, but do come and journey with Elsa and I. Be such a pleasure to yeah. have you with us as we move into 2023 as well. Mm. We'll be in this Sonic Mastery group until January. Um, our last masterclass is in January. So, mm. yeah, um, I feel like there was something more that I wanted to share. Oh, just mm. stay tuned because we're we're really in this deep portal working with these Egyptian energies and As some of you know, we've been on this journey of creating music in harmony with the different divine feminine frequencies, which has been ongoing. We've released the Mary Magdalene frequency and the Hathor frequency this year so far. And we're going to be bringing you the Isis frequency. Yeah. We're so excited about that. So keep your ears tuned. Yeah, it will be released Mm. on all platforms for you to enjoy. Yeah. All right. Oh, thank you, everyone. Such a pleasure to journey with you all for a minute. Sorry about the interruption. (laughs) Yeah, it's all good. It's just part of the process of mastering this online realm is that these things happen. The frequency musics are on Spotify, on iTunes. They're on my my YouTube channel. Um, Yes, there's going to be an ISIS frequency and I'm sure many more. And actually... I realised, forgot to say, this blue chalice is also made with the Andara crystal, which is super mm. magical. Yeah. Um, and it actually has Isis. Can you see? It has yeah. Isis on it. So, yeah, some super magical tools. DM me if you want the link to the bowls. And all the beautiful tools. Yeah. Loads of love, everybody. Great love. Mwah. Blessings. We and love peace. you. Blessings and peace. Enjoy this full moon. Yeah. Loads of love.